Are the questions going so far? Okay. If you have any question, you can send them in the comments. I'm going to answer you. Now, today I'm here to do something special for you. This is something special. I'm going to take you through how to solve your section A. You see, when it comes to objective math questions, most of you tend to waste time. Most of you tend to, uh, to waste time. But I'm telling you, these questions, the tricks I'll teach you here, when you apply them from now to the time you sit to write your math, I'm telling you, they are going to get this thing. We are going to make most of the math out of it. The least you should get is 39. Yes, I mean that. If you listen to what I'm coming to say here and practice it, people, from now to then, we have some few days. We don't count them in months, some few days. So, people, we have to be very serious here. So now we practice what I'm telling you. I say practice, practice, practice. The only difference here as well is practicing. When you do your practice, you're going to get it. That's me. You are going to get it. I dare you to practice and practice and practice from now. And I'm going to make your your grade one. So in doing the objection, like I've said, you are giving one hour for 40 questions. For 40 questions. That means at least you are spending one minute and some 30 seconds on one question. People, one way by which we can do this, the one I'm going to show you here, is for you to be able to do your work, your objective test, in less than 30 minutes or within 30 minutes, you should be able to finish. So that you go over. If you listen to these things and these tricks and you pre um, practice, people, when you practice this, you are going to make it. So let's go straight and see some of the tricks involved. And I'm seeing that you have one hour to write what to write the paper good and this one hour that means i are spending about one minute and some 30 or 15 seconds on a question now this is the trick you have to save some of the time upon the questions that's some of the questions you don't have to do everything no one thing people don't realize is that in this section a nobody checks your presentation of the work nobody cares how you are doing the work the most important thing they care about is that you have shared the correct answer properly that's what they care about. So there are tricks in doing that. You don't write everything that most of you waste time. You waste time when you are working. There are some of the things you need to put, do them in your head and write it down. You don't repeat the question. Don't mean to write the question down. You are you already start solving it. Don't repeat the question before you got a solution. It is section A. Anybody who look at you writing the question, the solution, nobody wants to see that. So let's see how we are going to use it. I'm still on the math questions. Let's see how we are going to use this approach to do this. So you understand it well. Good. So I'm going through the questions with you, which is uh, the question, the math question we are solving, the objective test. So question one, let's go straight away to this. Question one. Question one says that if set N is a subset of set M, then if you are a subset, that means all your members belong to the world, to a particular set. If A is a subset of B, if A is a subset of B, that means that all the members of A can be found in what? In B. So let's see. If you look at D, the answer is at D. You say all members of set N are in what? In set N. All the members. Therefore, our answer for that is what? Is A. Oh, it's D. Sorry. The answer for that is what? Is D. Good. Then the Venn diagram shows the number of people who offer mathematics or English in a class. The Venn diagram shows. So I've answered the question one simple. We move on. So you have saved time. Okay. So use the information to answer question two and three. Now, if you understand your Venn diagram, when we have this, remember that this circle is for math and that is for what? For English. So if I want those, we have math 18, we have uh, 7, and we have what? 3. We have this, I'm reading. I say, how many people offer math only? See, this circle belongs to those who offer math. Not math only, but those who offer what? Mathematics. And I'm going to add those who offer math only to those who offer both. I hope you get the point I'm making here. And that will give me like 25. That gives me 25. 
That's 18 plus what? 7, this gives me 15 to so 25. My answer lies at what? At uh, C. So there's no, I don't need to go and do plenty things. No, 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 no. I add this and this one. Understand what is going on. This one. I should, okay, look at that. Just circle. So I'm not going to calculate this. I'll save time with this. So there are certain questions that I need to use time. Then I, the time I'll save, I use it for. Okay, so that is that. Then how many people offer only one subject? Only one subject. For only one subject, I mean only math and only what? Only English. So I'm going to add 18 to what? So these are the only. If you want to get the only, let me just explain. If you want to get the only, always it is this crescent shape gives you what? The only. This bean shape kind of thing gives you what? The only. So those here are referred to as what? The only. That means I'm taking three. And 18, and that gives me what 21. Now I'm so not going right. Don't go and write down 18 plus 3. Nobody wants to see this. You can do 18 plus 3 in your head. So 18 plus 3 is what 21. Then you shade your answer nicely at what at D. Now simplify. Now this is where the thing is. If you want to, don't come and write the question again. Don't rewrite the question. As you write the question, you're wasting time. You know what goes on. So if I'm doing this, if I have this and I'm writing this, I'm solving. So automatically, I'll go this will give me what? 5 plus 5. I just write this. Then 5 plus 5 is 10. I'll not write the 10 down again. I know 5 plus 5 is 10. So I'm just going to look for 10 and shape. This is what I'm saying. You don't have to write all. Listen, let me start this point again. This is where the game starts. I have this question. Question, question 4 says I simplify this. You see, some of you will write the question that's 12 minus uh, 7 minus into bracket minus 5. You take your time to write this, that spends all the time. Then you come and tell me, okay, so 5 plus 5, that equals 10. Nobody will check this. This equals 10, you don't need to write it. You know it is 10. Go straight away and go or shape. Even this, we don't want to see. Those who are very sharp in the indices. You need to look at this, this, this. You just share your thing, you're fine. Don't worry, write them for your solution. I'll go to number that solution. Who wants to see your solution? I mean, who wants to see? Nobody will see this. You now want, want to present your work. Save that for section B. We don't put your presentation here. Now, express 72 as a product of what? Prime factors. Express 72 as a product of prime factors. Now, I know 72 is 9 by what? 9 by 8. 9, 8. If you don't have a question, we can't do this. Now, this I'm teaching you here. One thing you require is that you understand the math. If you don't understand, you can't do this. You waste time on one question. And you come out and you have not answered most of the questions. So this thing is all about practicing. If you have any question, I say you can you can ask the question the wall in the comments. Okay, so when I look at this, this gives me three squared times or two squared automatically. From here, I'm going to shade my answer. I don't think but don't break it down. Like you know this. This is three cubes. Sorry, it's three cubes, not three squared. It's uh three to the power eight is what is uh two to the power eight is what is three two to the power three is eight. Uh-huh. Good. So the answer lies where a D, of shaded D. Now arrange the following fractions in ascending order of magnitude. How, how am I going to do this? Arrange the following fraction in ascending order of magnitude. Now, if I look at my fractions, I check. Okay, I have 12, 5, and what, 4. What's the LCM there? The LCM is what, 60. So this is what I do. Look at the trick here. This is what I do. I just write 2 over 5 times 60. Then I cancel. Right? I'm going to solve my going to be how many times? That's 12 times. So uh, that gives me what 24. Then I also have what I also have 5 over 12 times 60. This is going to itself one time. This is going here 5. 5 5 is what is 25. Then this gives me 3 over 4 times 60. This is going here 1. It goes there what 15. So I have 15 times 3, which is uh 45. Now when I have this, I've done this. Is what I need, I don't need to go and write the ascending order. Now the question is this is an ascending that is from the smallest to the highest. Which number is smallest? That is 24. Which fraction gives 24? Then I look at my section A. The fraction that gives 24 is what? It's 2 over 5. When I look at A and B, I have 2 or 5 starting. Okay. Then the next one is what? It's 5 over 12. Then when I look at A, it's not about It's 3 over 4. So I don't go for A. But I'll go because from 24, I go to 25. Which one gave birth to 25? It is B that I gave birth to 25. So when I check my possible answer, it is B. Because I have 2 or 5. Then I have what? 5 over 12 before 3 or 4. So my answer becomes what? B. Very simple. You want to go and convert them. Don't, do, don't rush. Just take your time. Find the LCM here and do what? And multiply them like this. Once you have them as whole numbers, you compare them and you're fine. Then to go and do it and arrange. Someone don't have to then arrange them before you not have a shake. It's wasted your work of time. Now, now, like the question like question 13. In question 13, here maybe you have saved some time here. So you need to think a little. In question one, 13. But if you have done this for a long question, 13 also does not demand much of what? 
much of thinking. But let's say the time we have saved here, we use that one. Because he paid, so he had not write any parameters. I just go straight away. Because he paid a rent of, of uh, 1,800 each year. If the rent is, um, because he pays uh, a rent of, of 1,800 each year. If the rent is 0 0.3 of his annual, 0 0.3 of his annual income, find his annual income. If the rent is 0 0.3 of his, of his annual income, find Kofi's annual work, income. Okay, so this one, for instance, I have to, the time I've seen, I use this to solve this. Okay, so we are saying that 0 0.3 equal is a, of Kofi's annual income. We don't know his annual income, so Kofi's income. We don't know Kofi's income. And I thought that off means what? We have multiplied. So I have 0 0.3 times Kofi's work, Kofi's work, income. And that is spent on rent, it is 1,800. So we have something like this. So this Kofi's income, Kofi's income, this will give me what? This will give me, so the rent is this, and that is what you do, you get out of rent. So this will give me 3 over 10 equals 1,800 times Kofi's or income, times Kofi's income. So this one is what? It's multiplied, it's process square divided. So what is going to divide? I have 1,800 divided by what? Divided by 3 over 10. From here, I know my board mass, so I'll do this, then times 10 over what? 3. 3 will go into this how many times? 1, it goes to this 6 times. So I now I have what? I have 600 times what? 10. From here, I know I add the 0, so I get what? 6,000. That means Kofi gets an annual salary of what? Of 6,000. And I go and shake. This one will, will take my time. So at the time I have saved here, I can use that for this. I hope you get the point I'm making here. Good. So that is about that. So I've saved some time with the first ones. And then number 14 says that a shopkeeper, a shopkeeper, or I gave a shopkeeper 10 Ghana CD notes for goods I bought. I gave the guy 10 Ghana CD notes for goods I bought. Okay. Then he asked me for another 15 person. So he was like, this is and supposed to give me change. But before he asked me for 15, so I again gave him 15 Ghana pesos. Right? And he gave me a change of what? 50 pesos. So I gave this guy, I gave him 10 CD, so I give my change, I bought something. He couldn't give my change, okay, then I should give him 15. Then he gave me what? He gave me 50 pesos. That means that these 50 pesos I have here has my 15 pesos in it. You get the point I'm making here. So if I take the 15 pesos out of this, what change or what change was the guy supposed to give me? If I take the 15 pesos out of the 50 pesos, what is the change he's supposed to give? When I know the change I'm supposed to, he's supposed to give me, I know how much the thing cost. I don't even get the point I'm making here. I gave him 10 CDs. He didn't get change. So I gave him again 15, 15 pesos. And he gave me 50 pesos. This 50 pesos he gave me, my 15 pesos is part of this 50 pesos. If you get the point I'm making. So the question is, when I take my 15 pesos out of the 50 pesos, out of the 50 pesos, what is my real change? And my real change will, what, will be borrowing here, we get 10. 5 from that, we'll get uh, 5. We're left with 4 here. So we get what? So that's 35. So the guy was supposed to give me 35 Ghana or pesos. So he's supposed to give me 35 Ghana pesos. And I gave him 10 CD. Then, of course, how much did the team cost? That's what they, they say in there. Was okay. How much did I pay for the goods? So that means I paid 10 CD minus what, 35 pesos. Which I'll say I think 10 CD to pesos, and that gives me what? That will give me um, 10 minus. So let's go 10 CD the zero zero minus um, 0 0.35. Uh -huh. So this is what I'm going to do here. So I borrow one from here. That gives me 10. I borrow one. That gives me another 10. So here becomes what? Nine. Good. I borrow one from here first of all, I get uh, 10 here. Borrow one from here, I get 10. Then I borrow one from here, it gives me another one, 10. Then I borrow one from here, it gives me another 10. So here it's left with 9, it's left with what? 9. Okay, 10, 5 from, I hope you get the subtraction I'm making here. 5 from uh, 10 will give me what? Will give me 5. Then 3 from that gives me what? 6. Then that will give me 9. That means the thing I bought is what? It's 9 CD 65 or pesos. I hope you get the calculation here. It's, this kind of calculation is a little bit tricky, so you have to go. You have to be careful. If you don't understand it, you ask me questions or you comment, and I'm going to, uh, to explain them better for you. But for the sake of time, I like to go on.
Okay, so that is how we answer the question or question 14. Now, question 15 also demands thinking. Okay, Kodo can buy 15 shirts. So Kodo has is buying 15 shirts as well at four CD. If the price of the of, the, of if the price is increased to five CD, how many shares can he buy? Kofi or Kojo has four CD and he wants to buy for a shirt is being sold for 15. No, a shirt is being sold for what? For four CD and Kojo wants to buy 15 of them. How much is he paying? I'll get 15 by what? Four. What is 15 times four? Four, five is all. It's 20. So is there that two? Four, one, four plus that is what? That's so 60. Good. That means Kojo is paying what? 60 Ghana CD for 15 shirts. That is being sold at all. At four CD. All right, and the shirt has been increased from this to, to five. So, how much can Kojo buy now? Can he still buy the 15 shirts when one is being sold for five CD? No. Let's see. So, it's going to be 60. Then we divide 60 by what? By the new cost, which is this. This will go here, what? Go here, what? 12. That means this time Kojo can buy how many? 12 instead of what? Of 15. How do you get the point I'm making here? Kojo initially could buy 15 because one cost what? Four CD. And he has 60 CD. He, has, he still has the 60 CD, but he wants to buy the shirt. And now the price has increased to what? To 5 CD. That means he can only buy 12 instead of what? Of the 15. So that is about that. Okay. Now question 16. Let's see what question 16 also has. So you see, this question, the way I'm applying them. So the time I'll see. As I'm going, there are some questions that I don't have to think much. Good. So let's go. A hole which is 8 meters long. Is represented on the diagram as 4 cm long. Now, in this kind of uh, rate question, this is what I advise. You see, you have 8 cm long and 4 cm. Where 8 cm is the original one, this is the one drawn. Change this one, this was 8 meters. Change this one to cm and divide. You know the ratio. So I'll uh, change this one to cm. If you know, you know that 8 will give me 800 what? cm. And I'll divide this by 4 cm. 4 goes here, 1, it goes there, what? 200. That means my ratio is 1 is to what? 200. Very simple. So that's how you get your ratio. That's how you get your ratio. Number 17. Jane arrived at work at 7.55 a.m. and left at uh, 4.15. Jane arrived at work. Now, when it comes to this time, one thing you should know, keep this. It's always subtract the beginning from the word, from the, from the end. And this is one principle of life. If you want to know your difference, we always take your end and we subtract your beginning. Where did this guy start from? Where is he now? And once we see the difference, we know whether you have improved or not. So if Jake arrived at all at 7.55, that's the start time. That's the start time, right? And ended where? And ended or then went, left the house at this time and got there or arrived at what time? At uh, 4.15. You can see that the meridians are different. We have AM and what? And PM. So these are end. The end time is our, our start time. We are going to try to start from the end, but this is what you do. You change this one to 24 hours. This one is in 12 hours, so we change this to 24 hours. I'll give it 16, 15, then minus or so 7, 55. Then we subtract this. We subtract this. Remember, these are the minutes, and these are the what? The hours. So let's go. Let's subtract this. Let me enlarge this. Let me enlarge this a little. So I have 16. 15 so it's 14 15 no that's 415 then i have 755 five. now let's subtract this that will give me what zero i cannot subtract so i'm going to borrow one hour from here when i bring one hour from here this will give me what this will give me 70 that's 60 minutes so when i add, i'll get 75 minutes so i'll get 75 how do i get a 75 i borrowed um one hour from here. when i bring one hour here that'll be 60 minutes one hour so i add a 60 to this and i get this when i subtract here i'll get what i'll get two then here I'm left with what? 15. When I subtract 7 from 15, I'll get what? 8. So that means that she spent 8 minutes, 8 hours, 20 what? 20 minutes. Okay. So that is for number 17. 8 hours, 20 minutes. Oh, I skip question 6 and go. Let's go to question 6. Question 6. I think I skip question 6. The winner question is I couldn't say question 6. Okay. Let's go to question 6. Find the smallest number that is divisible. So I've done question 17, and the answer is what well, is at C. But I'm scrolling back to question six so that we solve question C. Find the smallest number which is divisible by 16 and what well, and 20. The number that is divisible by 16 and 20. Here yeah, we don't think man. Look at the possible answers we have. We have 40, 80, 120, and 160. You know, 20 can divide all of them. 
But when we check, 16 cannot divide 40. 16 cannot go into 40 exactly. But 16 can go into what? Into 80 exactly. So therefore, my answer will be what? My answer will be what? 80. 16 can go into 80, can go into 120, also go into, what? into 160. So the, the smallest number that is divisible by 16 and 20 is what? Is 80. So I showed, I showed my what? I showed my B and I'm gone. Now, convert this to base 10. Convert 2, 4, 3, base 1. When I'm doing this, this one here, you have to save time. You know how to change to base 10. Don't rewrite the question. You know we'll go 2 times. We are changing to base 1. It's in base 5. So 2 times 5, then plus um, 4 times 5, then 4 times 5, then plus 3 times all times 5. I have this. You know I have this. Okay, then I assign them my what? My power. So this gives me 0, 1, and what? And 2. This will give me 2 times 25. If I know this, I'll just go straight away right write and write 50. I'll just teach you. I'll write 50, then plus. This will give us what? 20, then plus 3. I know this already. This and this will give me what? 70. Plus 3 gives me what? 73. I'm not going to write a 73 down and say this. Nobody needs this. So now I have this 10. Now that I have this, automatically I go and shake. So these things, don't write them down. You have to shake. Hey, you want to save time. Don't write it down. Once you see it from here, you add, you know the answer, you go and shake. Nobody will look at this. How to get a point I'm making here? Very important. So we've done that. Okay. A pineapple which was bought for one Ghana city was sold at one city 30 pesos. A pineapple which was, that means that a guy has made a profit of 30 pesos. 30 pesos. So I write that one down. Profit is 30 or pesos. Keep that. And they say, find what? Find the profit percent. What is profit percent? Profit percent is a profit over the cost price times what? 100. That is, uh, so 30 pesos over the cost price. What is the cost price? That's one city. But I want to change that one Ghana city to pesos, and that's 100 what? pesos. So I can work it out. So 30 pesos, then I have uh, 100 pesos times 100. So I'm changing to that. To make the work easy, then when I see this, 100 will cancel 100. My answer is what? 30%. Straight away, we are going to shade at what? At B, 30%. Okay. Question 9. I just want just to be quick here. Question 9. Simplify. Simplify 35. Um, that uh, X5, Y cube divided by 7. Now, don't go and rewrite the question. Straight away, when I see this, I first of all, will divide what? Divide the number. So I know 5, well, 7 will go to 35. How many times? 5 times. Then I have subtract using um indices when i subtract, i get x to the power four and i'm checking my answer which one has that so my answer is lying between a and what a and b i'm checking now let me go to y and see y2 i'll subtract when i subtract that i'll say i'll get y to one but i'll not even write it again i know that the answer is what a so straight away i go and shade what a when i go and write y this equals this they all those things somebody will check it but as i'm working i'm looking at which answer is helping and i go with it right Okay, so our answer once again for this, we get five, then that will give us four, then that gives us what one. So A. Okay, question 10. Question 10. Let's go. Two bells, P and Q, are ringed at intervals three hours and four hours respectively. After how many hours will the two bells first ring simultaneously at the same time? This one, always when you see this kind of this thing, it's yeah, they're asking to find what LCF. Anytime you see this thing ring at the same time, blah, blah, blah. it's LCM, people. How do you find LCM of 3 and 4? It's 12. We don't do it plenty. LCM of 3 and 4 is 12. So don't think much. When you see such question, it's find the LCM. So here I shade what? I shade C. Save time. Good. A boy scores 17 over 25 in a friend test. Express as a percentage. As a percentage is multiplied by what? 100. So 17 over 25 as a percentage. Let's go. That means this time what? That. This will cancel this one. This will go here what? Four times I have 17 by 4. Just want to multiply by a few. Multiply it and you see the answer popping out. You can stop the multiplication. So I have 17 by 4. 4 7 is 28. So I put 8. Remember that. This will give me so 60 what? 68. So from there straight out, I choose my 68 percent, which is what? C. Okay. So now let's back, come back. So I'm going to question 18. I skip. So I'm going to question 18. Okay. Question 18 says that given that. 3.14 times 18 equals a times 17.5 equals that is that this is what we call the word the associative property the way they display the thing here they are looking at what the associative property so also be smart and then we are looking at multiplication multiplication is associating the same that they are all this you get the same answers so what we are going to do here since we have that we'll compare you can see 3.4 compared 3.4 
And the position of uh, 18 has been taken by who? By 3P. So all you do is what? Say 3P equals what? 18. If you look at the position, so forget the bracket, but first, second, third, first, second, third. The position of 8 is the same as the position of what 3P. So take this from here. I don't need to calculate this, people. Why do you calculate this? You know this will go and divide 6 times. So P is what? 6. Go and do what? Go and shade your answer at what? At C. I hope you get the point I'm making here. So C is an answer for 18. Then the pie chart shows how Kweku spends his monthly salary. Use the information to answer question 19 to 21. Find the value of X. To find the value of X, we know that we're going to add everything and subtract from what? And subtract from um, 360. So I'll just write 360 minus into brackets. I know this already. I'll get 80 plus. If you know your your addition, do it fast, but don't just waste time. I'm just doing this because of the fact I want to do some of the workings. Uh -huh, that's why I'm doing this. But what I'm telling you here is that some of these things, you can add them in your head and just write it down. So we have 360 minus... When we add this to this, we'll get a 95 plus. This will give me zero. That's zero. Then we add this. We have what? This is um, zero. That's 10. So we get 200. So that's 200 plus 95. That'll give us 295. So straight away, I'll go with what? 295. So 295. Then I subtract. I have 360 minus 295. Now give me 10. So I borrow again what? I get 5. When I borrow one for him, I'm left with 5. I get I'll get um 15. When I subtract 9 from 15, it will give me 9 from 15 is what? A 6, right? So I have 6 here. Then here is left with uh 2. So that gives me 60 what? 65. So I answer lies comfortably at what? At A. You go and do what? You go and shade what? A. Now who earns 60, 630. 630 CDs a month. How much does he spend on food? So who earns 600? So this is it. If uh, 360 equals the amount, which is 630, then what does he spend on food? That is 120 equals what? I'll come back and explain statistics for you. I'll give you one special video based on statistics. Everything on the statistics. I'll treat that one for you. And that's what I'll be doing for the topics. I'll take statistics, angles, graphs, and break them down for you so that you will be grounded in some of the topics before we sit for what? The paper. This one teaching the tricks into what? Into this section A. I'll probably do it again. And I'll go once again before we sit down, solve more questions with what? With you before the day. Okay, so who okay, cool ends that? So let's go. This will give me 120 over 360 times 6, 630. Okay, so. This will cancel this 12, we'll go into 12, 1, and go into 36, uh, 3 times. So we'll now I have 3 divided by what? This. 60. That will be what I'm saying. They'll cancel 0. 12 will go into 12, 3, so 36. So I have this. This is going to this 2 times 6. That will give me 6. And I get 0. This one comes out. I get 1. So that will be 210. So that means he spends what? 210. Ghana. That's the answer. It lies comfortably away. I see. Go and shade your what? Your 6. We'll end with um, question 20. Then we'll come and continue from 21 to 40 in our next video. So this is part one, then part two. So stay glued, listen to this wall. I don't want the time to extend that much. So within 30 minutes, we are done with this. Go over and go back. So I give the second one. Then we'll look at question 21 to what? To question um question 40. Yeah. So once again, people practicing for me. Because I have so many important things I've come to give you so that you can get to your work. Your grade one. Thank you very much for joining the class. Remember to what to subscribe to the channel and share this to all your friends, all those in form three. Share to them, share it to them so that they can also benefit from where we are getting here. Thank you very much for joining our class today.